go through these stages, prince and warrior, monk and seeker, and finally the one who's woken up. In fact, when he died, people surrounded him and said, who are you? Are you a god? He said, no. Are you a prophet? He said, no. Are you a messiah? He said, no. So they said, well, if you're none of these things, who are you? He said, I'm awake. I'm the Buddha. To be the Buddha means to be awake, to be aware, to the essential reality. And the way I like to interpret his awakening is that he's just an observer. You know, he's amazingly adept in observing his awakening. And he notices that the breath arises and then it subsides. Yes, he's just observing it. You breathe in and you breathe out. Then he observes his thoughts and he says, you know, they arise and they subside. Then he observes the sensations in his body and he realizes if it arises, the thoughts arise and then they subside. And then he looks at his own body and he says, you know, this body was something different when I was a teenager and when I was a baby and tomorrow it'll be different and day after tomorrow it'll be different. So even my body and the molecules of my body are rising and subsiding. There is nothing that has inherent permanence. And a lot of our suffering comes from holding on to the idea of permanence in a world that's inherently impermanent. As he's observing the breath, he realizes that we all share the same breath. You know, right now you and I and everybody who's listening to this program, we're sharing, in a sense, the same atmosphere. So we are one breath. When I say I'm Deepak, I have identified myself with something that has no inherent reality. I am part of one breath, I am part of one energy field, I am part of one body, the body that is recycling, the same elements and forces, it's recycling, and I am contained in one consciousness. <laughs>